the, the two lessons that we did yesterday, the circling the arm and the circling the legs, and they're kind of mixed together. Yeah, um, yes, you will. I'll be definite. I won't meet more. Yes, you, the more room you can have, the better. Okay. So this is just a reminder, a reminder from this morning. You know, if you encounter at any time in this lesson, future lessons, whichever lesson, if you encounter something that your first response was, oh, God, not this again, yeah? You should go looking for that part that you can do and you feel able in. So that, that morning's um, suggestion carries over. Just go looking for you, what you can do and explore that in more detail. And that's going to open up vistas. It, it will. It'll, it might take a while, but it will open up vistas. So please do not feel that you must do all the movements if you do that which you can do and pay attention and be aware of yourself and do it within the full awareness through movement kind of scenario um, you missing that ability of paying attention to yourself and treating yourself kindly um, that's that's worthwhile yeah Lean on the floor to your left with your hands. As you do that, slip. Slip your right leg underneath your left and take it backwards. Lean on the floor to the left with your hands. As you do that, slip your right leg underneath and take it backwards. Listen carefully. Are you listening? Okay, lean with your hands on the floor to your left. Oh, am I listening? And slip your left leg backwards. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your um, dissonance. It woke me up. Go ahead. Off you go. Take that left leg backwards until it's pointing towards the back of the room. But you will. You may find yourself resting on different parts of your pelvis as you take that left leg around to the back. And then return. Return the same way you came. Uh, unspecified. Uh, what you do with your legs is not specified. So the only things that are specified is that definitely the left leg goes under the right. And at a moment in time, you arrive lying on your front and both legs are pointing to the back of the room. So this is where attending carefully to your directions helps a lot. So he, there you are sitting at the front of the room. When you end up, your face will still be towards the front of the room. It's just that your legs will be behind you. 
Does that help? And that particular direction is pretty tricky to describe because when you're on your tummy like that and your face is directed to the front of the room, are your legs behind you or are they underneath you? It's confusing, isn't it? Because if you were standing and I was looking up towards the ceiling, my legs would be underneath me. Yeah, That would be a body frame of reference. So if you're on the floor and looking towards the front of the room, in a body frame of reference, your legs are underneath you. So can you see how language can be a little bit perturbing? So let's use the frame of reference, shall we? As you take your legs to the back of the room, your face stays towards the front of the room. Does that, does that help? Yeah. As you take your legs around you, they end up towards the back of the room. Your face stays towards the front of the room. That's it. And if you're on a diagonal, well, then you just have to dis decide, where did I start from? That's where I'm looking. That's where I'm going to keep looking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Now, the next time that you take the left leg around yourself, could you continue on around and make a complete circle? You're starting taking the left leg to the right and you continue on around. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Let that be. Pause for a little bit. Uh, could you sit facing the front of the room, bend your legs, and lift your feet a little bit off the floor and have the fingertips resting on the floor for either, on either side for just a little bit of sense of safety. And now shift your weight on your pelvis, three, nine, three, nine. That's it. Notice when the feet are off the floor, the feet are off the floor. That's it. Three, nine, three, nine. That's good. Oh, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Now, what would happen if you thought of taking that left leg and literally under the right leg, thrusting it backwards? thrusting it towards the back of the room. Take the left leg underneath the right leg and thrust it towards the back of the room. There we go. Now, notice the word thrust implies a little bit more oomph, a little bit more speed, a little bit more power, so, and a little bit more deliberateness that you thread that left leg under the right and you just push it back and it's like the right leg has to follow, but it follows. I know, but only temporarily. That's it. That's it. Now, rely on your hands. They will catch you. And I'm saying that because when you take your legs towards the back of the room, your face will be heading towards the floor in front, and that can stimulate fear. Yeah, because as the floor rapidly comes towards you, there's a tendency to go, Ugh! and at that moment, it's tricky. So let's do, let's do a little variation. Okay, so lie on your tummy. Just lie on your tummy. Um, 
And bend your knees so that the soles of your feet are towards the ceiling. And um, have your arms bent somewhere beside you. And lift the right thigh a little bit from the floor and put it down. And then lift the left thigh a little bit from the floor and put it down. And then lift the left hand a little bit from the floor and put it down. And then the right hand a little bit from the floor and put it down. And go around and around like that one limit at a time. Leg, leg, arm, arm. Leg, leg, arm, arm. And please feel free to arrange your arms in any way that it makes it light to lift. Same for your legs. Okay, now lift right arm, right leg. Left arm, left leg. Right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. That's it. And now lift left arm, right leg, right arm, left leg. Okay, and now lift two legs, two arms, two legs, two arms, two legs, two arms. All four limbs, all four limbs, all four limbs. Anybody for skydiving? All four limbs, all four limbs. There we go. Now, when you lift all four limbs, could you think of pushing your tummy into the ground? Boop. Just push it forward. Boop. So you end up lying on your tummy. Boop. That's it. Nice, nice, nice. Now, the next time you're up there, stay there and just put the palms of your hands on the floor. So basically, you're lying on your tummy and your upper pelvis. Your hands are on the floor. Begin to use your arms to swivel yourself left and right with your le lower leg, with your legs, yes? Yeah? So that the legs go left and the legs go right and the legs go left. And you're swiveling on your tummy. Swiveling. Not rolling right and left. That's different. Yeah, yeah. Sending the legs like windscreen wipers across the floor, left and right. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cool. Can you feel how your hands are there? You, you can use them. They're useful. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Stop and rest. In the first segment, we did a lot of flexion and extension, almost kind of uh, mimicking the developmental process where uh, an infant enters the wor world and basically they're, they're, they're con concave, they're kind of flexed, that the, even their structure is flexed. And then in the process of movement, they start to become less concave and more convex. Please bend your knees, have your feet towards the ceiling, have your hands on the floor. Intentionally lift your legs by pushing your abdomen into the floor. Yeah, that's it. And return. Push the abdomen to the floor, lift the legs. Right. And once again, Swivel yourself. Swivel left, swivel right, so that your thighs move across the ground, left and right, like windscreen wipers. Your thighs. Not your lower legs, your thighs. Now develop a little bit momentum until you can swing yourself around to your left and come up to sitting with your feet towards the front of the room. There we go. 
And now continue on the circle and end up lying on your tummy in the parachuting, skydiving position. Oof, there you go. And around you go again. Loop. And just go around so that you're always just ending up in that skydiving position. Loop, here I am. You can use your hands to catch yourself. <laughs> what? Okay, let that be, let it be. Come up to sit one more time. Sit with your legs facing and um, pointing towards the front of the room. Bend your legs a little bit. Your feet can be on the floor. And from here, slip that left leg underneath the right and quite intentionally thrust it towards the back of the room. So the left leg is definitely leading. It's a very vigorous movement, and you'll end up very quickly on your tummy. And now do the same thing to come to the front of the room to complete the circle. Yeah, that's it. So rather than just keeping the legs long all the time, you can bend the legs and then stretch them out. Bend the legs and then stretch them out. Bend the legs and then stretch them out. That's it. And what you might find after a while is every time that you end up facing the front of the room, you end up kind of sitting on your buttocks, but the legs are bent and you're kind of in a curled up position. Because it's out of that curled up position that you can actually thrust the leg backwards. That's it. And now the right leg under the left. Yeah, same way. Uh-huh. Sort of. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Stop. Rest on your back, please. When I came into the room this morning, there were um, um, a few people at the back corner there actually doing some of these movements. And um, they were kind of sharing information, which was great. That was great to see. Yeah. It's probably worth repeating. You know, in this, uh, in this group process that we call awareness through movement, it's, uh, it's not a solitary affair. First of all, um, there's, there's the facilitator, so already it's not a solitary affair. And then there's all your companions around the room with you. So at any time, 
you can just stop, listen, imagine, or remember for yourself, or sit up and look. It's not just about staying an island and figuring it out yourself. There's a lot of experience and knowledge all around you. Please lie on your uh, right side. Bend your legs. Have the palm of your left hand on the floor. And begin to take that right arm in a circle on the floor around yourself. And there'll be a moment when your hand goes underneath you to complete the circle. Now you haven't done this yet after doing those leg movements. Notice if circling the legs somehow influenced your um, circling of the arms. change direction. That's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now, when you get to that moment where the forearm is underneath you, the hand is at the front and the elbow is at the back. Could you stop there, please? And now just a few times, move the forearm forwards and then take it backwards. Forwards and then take it backwards. And notice, what is it that you do? Is it just the arm that goes forwards and backwards? Or... Are you doing something extra? Are you moving your whole torso backwards as your arm goes forwards and your whole torso forwards as your arm goes backwards? Because there's two very distinct possibilities here. You could just move your arm relative to your body and your body stays more or less in place or because of the friction of the floor, you could take your body forward of your arm and backwards of your arm. So, first of all, find out what it is that you're doing and then see if it's possible to explore both options. So if you're starting off with the forearm underneath your side, as you go to thrust that arm forward, the friction of the floor might push your whole trunk backwards. It's like the rest of yourself travels backwards of the arm and the arm ends up in front of you. And then the reverse is also true. As you go to take the arm behind you, the friction of the floor stops you and it's like the rest of you ends up traveling forward of your arm So this is two different ways of looking at the same intention. The intention is to have the arm forwards of you and backwards of you, but is it the arm that's moving relative to the trunk, which is a movement of a distal part of you, or is it the trunk moving around the arm, which is a movement of the proximal part of you, that part that is closer to the center? And of course, there is always the third option, a little bit of both <laughs> in various proportions. There we go. Now, when you take that arm through, 
is there something you can help with, that left arm, that left hand? Can that left arm and left hand be of service in some way? There we go. Yeah, so it can be of service. Have a look. Have a look what other people are doing. Okay, and now could you send the right arm in a circle a few times? And find out how fast can that circling be? And that's an invitation. It's an invitation not to just simply use your arm, but to start to involve the legs, the pelvis, the front, the back muscles, all of yourself. And if you look around the room, you'll see that some people, as they take their arm underneath themselves, they kind of curl up. They, they bring up their knees, and then as they thrust the arm through and take it above their head, their legs lengthen out. It's almost like they're, they're bringing themselves together and then lengthening, bringing themselves, and that power of shortening and lengthening yourself is what's driving the circling movement. And stay laying on your right side, of course. More or less, <laughs> more or less, yeah. But you're definitely not rolling onto your front and onto your back. Okay, that's enough. Uh, pause. When... Um when some people started to do an analysis of uh, the lessons from Feldenkrais's Israeli classes, they started to see a very particular pattern. That there was a tendency towards the, uh, in the classes to always start on the right side. Moving the right side of the body first. And then they asked the question, well, how come? I don't think anybody's got a definitive answer. It could have been his initial training in martial arts, the tendency to start on the right side. It could have been a cultural artifact. The left side's the, you know, right-handedness is the prominent thing in culture. Or it could be a neurological explanation, and that is for most, for most of human beings, the, the language center is on the left side of the hemisphere. And that's the side that deals well with, you know, making, putting things into words, making sense of things analytically. And so if you're looking at detail, if you're trying to stitch together the details of things from different instructions, using the left side kind of makes sense. The answer is still no one knows because he didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Please lie on your left side. Lie in that position with your legs semi-bent, your right palm on the floor, 
close to you, where it's of use. Your left arm out in front of you. And we're going to go through a simulation. Because you now have uh, a pretty, pretty detailed memory of all the various components that were involved in circling the right arm underneath yourself. Can you start to recall what it was like to circle the right arm underneath yourself, but imagine, transfer that across, create a simulation for yourself of starting to circle the left arm, but don't do anything. In other words, don't make any movements in space, just simulate. And it's a very particular kind of simulation. It's not just an image running in your mind. The image is also embellished with sensation. What it would feel like based on what you did on the right side, what it would feel like to do. So imagine that left arm sweeping above your head on the floor and coming back where you would shift your weight, how you'd use that right hand. And as you return that left arm, imagine the elbow going a little bit underneath you, how you would go about creating that little bit of space for that elbow to go under what parts of you would press a little bit more into the floor to create that space, maybe the hip, maybe the hand, maybe even the head a little bit. And then just imagine yourself taking that hand further above your head and then coming back and then further underneath you going backwards, gradually, gradually expanding the arc of motion. And there'll be a moment when that hand and the arm have to flip from being palm up to palm down. Imagine that moment of the palm and the arm flipping. And maybe for some of you, you'll be imagining slightly raising yourself off the floor to give that left shoulder clearance. Include that in your simulation. And gradually make the circle bigger in your simulation. And you might find yourself eventually the fingertips going from the back around underneath yourself, creating the space to go underneath. And at that moment, you can imagine yourself thrusting that arm through by itself or moving the rest of yourself around the arm. And as you continue to make that circle, there'll be two moments where your arm has to flip. Where are those moments in the circle when the arm flips? Flips to palm down, flips to palm up. And um, like uh, Anna said earlier, you know, as you're making this simulation, if the, if the face can be relaxed, if there can be kind of um, a preparedness to go into a smile or a laugh, that it's not that serious, it's just kind of, well, I'm just imagining here, kind of daydreaming. That's a different way of simulating action than tightly focusing, furrowing your brow, tensing your jaw and all of that. No, just relax. Think of it more as a daydream. 
a little reverie that's more refreshing than burdensome. Now, in your imagination, in your simulation, go faster and notice, does speeding up make what you're doing clearer, crisper, or is it confusing? And if it's confusing, slow it down a little bit until your simulation becomes, ah, trackable. So the simulation is, can be visual, can be tactile, can be kinesthetic, can be auditory, can be vestibular. Start to do what you've been simulating. And now you have the opportunity to compare the simulation to the actual event, which enables you to f begin fine tuning. Those things that are not quite like you imagined them, you can now adjust them so that it feels easier to do. Those things that you didn't include in your simulation, now you can include in your image of the action. And at any time, if you want to, you can stop and return to simulating. You can do it all in the imagination. And there's enough scientific evidence to show that that is a very powerful tool when done very skillfully. There's, the evidence is in, there's no argument. It's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of fact. If you haven't yet changed direction, change direction. And to change direction, you're welcome to go back into simulation mode. Now, we do know that the, the, the brain as an organ is a, is a hungry little beast. It e eats up about 40% of your metabolic energy. So simulation comes at quite a cost. You, you eat up a lot of sugar. Maybe you lose weight by imagining. <laughs> yeah. But um, actually moving eats up more energy. So balancing out, imagining and doing could save you a lot of effort, save you a lot of energy, and could lead to better movement more quickly. And now try a few times um, to find out how fast can you go. Fast, but smooth. Fast, but light. Fast and breathing.
Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Stuck. <laughs> yeah. What would happen at that moment that if you just lifted your right hand from the floor and just let the left hand, left arm sneak under it? Like, um, you know, when ships go under a bridge, how the bridge opens up, the ship goes under, and then the bridge closes. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. And every time the arm goes under, the hand goes. Boop. Yeah. You could go underneath. What would happen if you went underneath? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try it, try it, try it. Yeah. Thrust it forward, and there you go. There it is. Yeah, and notice it gives you a bit more space to play in when you feel like yeah, you feel like you have to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You were clipping it, just clipping it a bit. Hmm. Okay, let that be, please. Roll to one side, come up to standing. Now, with your left hand, just have your arms down beside yourself. With your left hand, just make a very, very loose, loose fist shape. Yeah, just very loose. And now from this position, circle your arm around yourself and keep your eyes always on your hand. So there's a moment when the arm is towards the ceiling. There's a moment when the arm is towards the back of the room. There's a moment when the arm is towards the floor, front of the room, ceiling, back of the room, floor. Left hand. <laughs> That's it. And what's most important is that you can see your hand at every moment in the circle. Make whatever movements you need to make with the hips. Make whatever movements you need to make with the chest, the spine, the shoulder girdle. You can shift your weight over the soles of your feet. And make it a little faster. And make it a little faster. That's it. You can even bend the knees. Why not? You can make it a little faster. 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 Stop. Try the same thing with the other arm. Make a fist. Start off slow. And you know, you could just start off with a little swing. Just a little swing, just to get the hang of what it's like for the arm to be like a pendulum being swung by the motion of the rest of your body. And you can just look and look and look and look and look. Yeah, notice the involvement of the pelvis. How the pelvis turns and dips if you're bending your knees. Because you don't have to keep your knees straight, by the way. That's it. And some of you are starting to do exactly what you did on the floor. There's this kind of curling and uncurling, curling and uncurling. 
bending and lengthening and bending and in. Go a little faster. And you'll reach a particular speed where you don't have to involve your head anymore. You make that choice. When the arm can just go round and round and round and round and round and round and round, and you could just stay looking towards the front of the room. Okay. That's it. Faster. Faster, 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 faster. How fast can you go? You'll you'll never know. There you go. That's enough. That's yeah. That's good. Walk a little bit. Feel what walking's like having done that. Now, yeah. So, you know, in, in Australia, we have a, a very old tradition, you know, making tea in a billy. And, you know, when you make a tea in a billy can, you've got to make the tea leaves sink to the bottom. Do you know how you do that? You swing it around, yeah, and centrifugal force swings it around. So, what we have here is a few buckets and we're going to go outside and if you can get into um, five groups you'll have a bucket it's not quite a billy I'm sorry but you'll have a little bucket and there'll be water inside the bucket and if you could take turns in taking the bucket until you can swing it all the way around yourself and the water doesn't wet you Okay? Not lit. Okay? All right. Let's go. 